Okay, in this video I'm going to look at using PAST to analyse the biological data, in particular to do non-metric multidimensional scaling. As you can see, I've got all the variables selected here, the indicator variables, the environmental variables, and then across to the right all of the biological variables. Switching over to PAST, with edit mode and edit labels on, I will paste in the data and then turn edit mode and edit labels off. Now with the environmental data, I transformed the initial values using a normalised function. That's because these things were measured in different scales. The biological variables are measured in the same scales, they're all counts of individuals, but some species are in the hundreds, some are in the tens, and some are just represented by a few individuals. As a consequence, if we work with the original values, the patterns will be largely driven by the most abundant species. So it's conventional here to transform, so I'm over to the transform menu and evaluate expression again, transform the variables in a way which reduces the magnitude of the larger numbers but doesn't change the relationship. And one transformation for that is the square root. So into the box down the bottom here I've typed SQRT bracket X bracket and then I hit compute and now we've got the square roots of the original observations. We can go over to the multivar menu again, down this time to the third option, non-metric multidimensional scaling. And this is another way of drawing an ordination. Unlike PCA, this one allows us to select the similarity measure to use. PCA implicitly uses Euclidean distance, which is appropriate for the environmental data, but generally not regarded as appropriate for the biological data. If you're working with the version of PAST from the CD-ROM, you won't have all the options down here because that's a slightly earlier version. You might want to go to the website and download the most recent version. So I'll hit non-metric MDS and I get a message saying select a similarity measure because PAST now does not select a similarity measure by default. So again, I'll make the graph bigger. And the similarity measure I'm going to pick is the Bray Curtis, about halfway down, because that's generally regarded as appropriate for the biological data. Little thinking time, and then we get a display of the patterns. Again, I'll change the font to be larger and bold, and I'll make the symbols larger. And finally I'll go over here to the side and turn on the row labels. Now if you repeat MDS, you may get different patterns each time because there's a randomization process involved, but in general the display should be more or less the same. What we've got here is the control sites grouping over to the right with the impact sites spread over to the left. And the impact site samples are scattered around with impact site 1 sample 2 and impact site 2 sample 2 up here and separated from the other impact samples which are grouped more towards the bottom of the graph down here. As with PCA, we can interpret the patterns of change and the patterns of relationship. In most ordinations also I should say, the orientation of the axes is largely irrelevant, so we can switch this by flipping it top to bottom and left to right. It won't change the relationships, which is the important things. As we go left to right across the graph, or move from the control sites to the impact sites, we're going to be looking at increasing levels of hydrocarbon and I would say impact site 1, number 2 and impact site 2, number 2 will have the highest levels of hydrocarbons. 
as we go from the bottom of the graph up towards the top of the graph, I think we're looking at a change in depth again. So we've got a depth pattern coming out here with these impact samples here at different depths to the impact samples up there. Let's go back and have a look over here. So we had impact site 1, sample 2, which is that one there, with hydrocarbon levels of 45, which is the highest overall, and then just below it, impact sample uh, site 2, sample 2, with hydrocarbon levels of 38. Now remember, the patterns that we're looking at are drawn up based just on the biological data. They don't use the environmental data at all. So the patterns we're seeing are reflecting those differences in hydrocarbon levels among the impact samples and the difference between the control and impact samples. If we go and look at depth, we'll also see a similar sort of relationship going on there with the differences between controls and impacts. OK, to sum up, we've got differences going across the graph in terms of hydrocarbon levels, which are being reflected in the patterns of abundance of the biota of the species, and patterns up and down, which are somewhat related to depth, but may also be influenced by things such as sediment particle size and nutrients, other things that vary as you go shallower and deeper in the environment. That's all for this one.